And, I mean, you can't even really kick a field goal from here. Well, that wind's pretty strong at his back. I, you know, that flag's standing straight up, and it's whipping hard. So if, if he got his foot on it, I think he could probably kick it from quite a ways if he, if he got enough run at it. Yep. Third down and 26. The ball at the bead digger 30-yard line. 6.51 to go in the opening quarter. No score. This is Eaton's first possession. Two receivers to the left and right. Ball in a shotgun. Awaiting the snap. Man in motion to the left is Reher. Quick drop for ball. Rolling right. Pressure coming. He's going to be sacked way back at around the 45 by Connor Weiser, who drove him back towards the 50-yard line. And that's going to be a sack of 18 yards in the play. It'll be fourth down and 44 yards to go. So when I'm doing ball stats, you know, he runs the ball for 18 yards, then 14 yards. So he has 32 yards offense. Now after those two two sacks, he's right back down to five yards rushing. Well, we can see what Eaton's problem is, the offensive line, at least on those passing plays. I mean, the B-Diggers did a nice job, but two sacks in a row. Ismail Mendoza standing at his own 39. Back deep to receive a Shea Hansen, a very high fluttering punt. Caught at the 10-yard line by Hanson, running to his left to the 15, swings it to the outside of the 20, stiffs arms a man, and he's out of bounds at around the 25-yard line, maybe the 26, a return of close to 16. Not bad field position for the B-Diggers. It could have been much worse considering the Reds were down to the B-Digger 14. Exactly, and the fact that the punter had that that's really strong wind at his, at his back as he tried to kick it to the south. But the really encouraging thing is Shea caught the ball in the air, and that's something the diggers have been letting the ball bounce quite a bit, and that's cost him some big field position this year. For all of your title needs, visit Tim Weimer at Northern Colorado Title, 205 West Kiowa in Fort Morgan. First and 10 for the beat diggers with the football resting at their own 26-yard line. They went three and outs on their first possession. Backs are split. There's the handoff to Weiser running left, and he runs into a red, but not before he gets three yards to the 29. The tackle was made by Caleb Selby, the 6'1", 163-pound junior linebacker, second down and seven. It was a good tackle there by Selby as he was down. It's like he kind of he was on his knees kind of in front of Weiser as he tackled him with the double leg, and Weiser just had to, had to go down. There was no way he was going to fight that off. Meanwhile, a fairly quick-moving first quarter. We're more than halfway through with 5.34 to go. Neither team, well, the Reds have actually rattled off three big plays, but the Bee Diggers are still looking for their first big play and their first first down. Second down and seven from their own 29. Backs are split. Eaton jumped, but not to, enough to merit a whistle. And there's the handoff to Tanner Morrow. Swings it to the outside for a first down. Breaks the tackle to 45. Down the right sideline to the 40. Cuts it back inside to the 35. He's still on his feet. Breaking tackles inside the 30 to around the 25-yard line. An incredible run for Tanner Morrow. It's a gain of 46 in a beat digger first down. More of a crossbuck looking action out of the backfield. And once Morrow broke through the line of scrimmage, you know, with Eaton having six guys up there um, right on the line of scrimmage trying to stop the run, once he breaks through that initial surge of defense, he had a lot of open field to run with, and he showed his speed and just ran away from everybody. Just inside the Eaton 25-yard line, Tony Guzman checks out, and C.J. Kukas into the game. Now the beat diggers are threatening for the first score. First and ten. At the Eaton 25-yard line. Hanson, the receiver to the left. Kukas to the right. The backs remain split. And on first and 10, there's the give to Connor Weiser off left tackle. And he squeezes his way for about four yards to around the 21. Before he's tackled by Caleb Selby. Second down and six. The beat diggers will take that all night. You betcha. That's exactly the kind of game you'd like to run in this kind of weather. And you know how it works. The more they keep pounding Weiser up the middle, they keep tenderizing that defensive line. And pretty soon he, he's able to break a big one like he did that 88 yarder last week. Second down and six from the Eaton 21 yard line. Guzman is now the receiver to the left. On the inside slot is Shea Hansen. And there is the pitch left tomorrow. Swings it to the outside of the 20. Gets to the around the 15. He spins. And it looks like he's got a first down before he's dragged out of bounds near that sideline. If he didn't get the first down, it's going to be very close. We'll give him five yards in the play. And it looks like he's going to be short by about, well, almost a couple of yards. So give him four. Third down and a short two at the Eaton 16. Coach Dreit's putting that 50 series together for the Diggers as he as he threw that that uh, 
he went with that fullback goo, that uh, 55 special on the left side, and then he comes back with a quick pitch to the left side with that 59, and, and the, he sure did catch the Eden Reds biting on the Connor Weiser fake. Third down and two from the 16-yard line with a back split, and there's the handoff to Weiser running off left tackle, and he might not have gotten it. He got to the 15-yard line, then he was driven back. And the tackle was made by Andrew Gutterson, the 6'3", 191-pound senior linebacker. And they gave him maybe a half a yard. We'll give him a full yard to the 15th, fourth down and one. Undoubtedly, the Bay Diggers will go for it. Yeah, and you know now it's kind of one of those things where the where that uh, offensive line has to has to show what their worth is and and show them they know what's going on and that they're going to control the line of scrimmage for the first down. And the Bay Diggers take their first time out. We'll keep it right here with 3:43 to go. No score. Brush went three and out on their first drive, but Eaton on their first three plays gained a total of 43 yards and then brushed through Eaton for three consecutive losses, and they got much bigger each time, two, nine, and 18-yard losses. And maybe that's emblematic of what the Bee Diggers could do defensively because, you know, after Valley scored on that opening possession last week, they put quite a bit of pressure on Joe Dellenbach. They sure did, and, and you know, that might be one of Eaton's weaknesses as well. Maybe Ball's a young quarterback. He has to step in this year. This is his first year starting, and, uh, you know, he just made a couple of bad choices holding on to the football and, and running backwards instead of getting rid of it or maybe even going down for a smaller loss. All right, so the Bee Diggers will have fourth and one at the Eaton 15. Head coach Randy Dreitz realizes the importance of this drive because this doesn't look like a game that's going to be extended. It looks like a game that the B-Diggers want to shorten, which means they'll have fewer possessions and hopefully can take advantage of those possessions by getting the ball into the end zone. Fourth and one from the Eaton 15-yard line. With a back split, Tyson Larrick is in that backfield. And Garcia with a quarterback sneak. He dives. Looks like he's got the first down. Boy, he was hit right at the line of scrimmage by Josh Smallwood, the 6'4", 250-pound senior, anything but small, and then he stretched that football out. From this vantage point, I looks like he got the necessary yardage, but they're going to have to measure and see if the drive is extended for the bead diggers on what is the sixth play of the drive, which began at the 26-yard line. And, Dave, you've got a, a tentative look on your face. Well, you know, it's it's really close, but I, I like the call, and I think Garcia did a good job of, of finding the seam that he needed to get through. I was watching him set his feet. His brush came up with their double-tight formation, and Garcia captained his team. He got them all set, and then you could see he kind of had one foot back, and he was digging in, getting ready to surge forward to, to get that first down, and, and he sure did right there. He got it by about a half a length of the football. Yeah. So this will be the seventh play of the drive for the Bee Diggers with 3.36 to go. And the Bee Diggers looking for the first points of the game. They're at the 14-yard line of the Reds. On first down, lining up towards that left hash mark. Garcia to hand it off to Weiser, running off left tackle, and he lowers his shoulder, and he gets about a couple of yards. Josh Smallwood there to make the tackle for the Reds. It's a gain of two to the 12. It'll be second down and eight. You know what? They're only going to give him a yard to the nine, so it's or to the 13. It's second and nine. The B-Diggers have three consecutive one-yard gains. Well, Eden's got some pretty good-sized guys up there on that defensive line. They got number 67, Peter Liraldi. He's uh, 6'2", 200 pounds. They have another one that's 220 pounds. So they got some size up there, and they're able to get a good surge on that line of scrimmage. Second and nine, the handoff to Weiser inside the five-yard line, and he drove to around the four maybe on a strong run, running left. And Connor Weiser gains close to a first down. They're going to mark it just inside the five. It'll be a pickup of nine yards in the play. They might have to measure again, but that was a quick hitter to Connor Weiser. Yeah, it was more of a sprint draw sort of a look is Garcia. He took that snap, and he's so fast after, out from underneath that center. He sprinted back, and, and Weiser was still standing there when he handed him the football. And, and Eaton overreacted. Their defense, you could see him sort of flow to the right side towards their own bench over there, and, and Brush just took advantage of it. Weiser did by, by running back against the grain over here to the left side. But that's what the bee diggers want. I mean, obviously they want to keep the ball on the ground. They want to shorten this game. And they've got a first and goal at the four-yard line. 
you know, Brush has obviously found a weak spot in that Eaton defensive line because they just continue to run it to the left side. So they're either picking on somebody over there or they're, or they're trying to frustrate that Eaton coaching staff and those Eaton players by, by not letting them see the football and just keep running it over here on, on the near hash mark where they can't see what's going on. Kukas checks back into the game. First and goal for the bead diggers at the four-yard line with two and a half to go in the opening quarter on homecoming night. The backs are split. It's Morrow and Weiser from the four-yard line. Garcia on the option right. He's going to take it himself towards the pylon. He's going to score easily, and the bead diggers take the 6 to nothing lead with 2.19 to go in the opening quarter. Well, that was just a good call there by Garcia because he could have pitched. Morrow did a good job as the pitch man maintaining the relationship with him that he needed to do. But Garcia was smart. You know, there was nobody there to, to make the tackle, so he did the smart thing and held on to the football and, and took it into the end zone himself. Garcia scores from four yards away. And now Jesus Cardenas with the extra point off the hold of Eric Garcia. The B-Diggers completed an impressive nine minutes and 74, or nine play 74-yard drive. It's down. Cardenas' kick is blocked. Oh, that was blocked right in the middle by Seth Selby. 2.19 to go. First quarter. It's brush six. Eat to nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.